State governance is serious business for Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu. Let's beam a searchlight on his recent official engagements. And of course, this brings you to speed some of the activities of Mr. Governor. And so this is the From the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show. You're welcome. Having put in place a sound crack team of newly sworn in commissioners and special advisors to run the affairs of the state government for another four years, the Lagos state governor, Mr. Babajide Sonwulu, had a strategic brainstorming session kicked off on a strong footing with the recently held 2023 onboarding and executive retreat program organized for state executive council and member of permanent secretaries in lagos the three-day retreat was indeed a fruitful and strategic session to prepare the newly sworn in executive council to be well equipped and to equally instill sense of commitment in public service Mr. Governor was appreciative of the various support and contributions from some ex-governors, justified the strategic importance and relevance of the retreat. It's a full residential um, program um, for us to onboard one another, the body of permanent secretary, all of the cabinet members, and it selects members of, um, of um, agencies as well have joined us. And we've had tremendous, tremendous time out here in the last three days. We've had conversations that border around understanding everybody's role, appreciating each other's responsibility, and fashioning a vision that all of us will be signing on to, a vision that will reflect you know, what will be our mode of engagement, our rules of engagement for the next um, three and a half years. And we extended it for the first time. Um, we've had session with two former governors, um, former governor Papa Tunirati Fashola, SAN, that has a session with us, and equally former governor Akiumi Ambode has also had a session with us where they gave us their own um, experience and furtherly thoughts and things that we should be doing and be doing differently. And we have thanked them so, so very much for that, uh, for the time out here. Um, also, we are also we extended our collaboration with the members of the Lagos State House of Assembly and also um, Algon, you know, body of, I mean, local government chairman, so that as a unified body, we all understand and appreciate while we need to all work together. Because it's only by working together that Lagosians can reap the full benefit of having a government in place. We are believing that at the end of this exercise um, on Sunday, all of us will be not only better equipped, not only will be energized, not only will we be on the same page, but we'll be giving ourselves a sense of commitment that will be taken back to our respective post from Monday, um, where you know we will carry our staff along. I mean, uh, cabinet members and palm sex will also share some of the visions and some of the things with, with all of their staff, so that everybody in public service are further energized, you know, for the service delivery, you know, of quality service to Lagosians and bring about you know all of the promises that we politicians have given to ensure that a greater Lagos is rising. Still coming from the governor's office on the city of Lagos TV show, the Lagos state governor, Mr. Babajide Somolu, alongside key cabinet members from strategic ministries, conducted an on-the-spot inspection and assessment tour of projects at the Orile Mile 2 axis, as well as the Akpogmo area of Lagos state. The governor who expressed his disappointment at the level of fiscal decadence and the non challenged attitude and conduct of traders and residents within this corridor and access issued stern warning to take drastic action to ensure compliance and appropriate conduct to safeguard the infrastructural projects within these areas. Marina, all the way to 
What we are trying to achieve first on the first tour was to do was for me to see first time the clearance that we're doing along Lagos Badagri Express Road. You all could see that um, our tax force are working to secure the entire right of way and to remove all sorts of miscreants and all sorts of illegal trading on that entire corridor. I'm happy with what I saw and I was able to explain to all of the shop owners and um, residents around that place. They saw the need for us to do what we're doing and they appreciated all our efforts on that entire corridor to clean it up and for government to be able to preserve that entire corridor. And we've also been able to move you know, all of the commercial vehicles that hitherto usually park on the express road, we've been able to move all of them. You are all uh, witnesses to this. And we also did a stopover at the um, Orile Gomu train station, uh, which uh, we, work, we walked in and we saw that uh, the schedule of the trains right, will resume later in the evening again, since they do both peak and off peak, sorry, both peak in the morning and also peak in the evening. But from what I saw, there's a need, uh, there'll be a need for Lamata to also increase, you know, the peak of um, the rate of the trains that are, are applying, you know, the, the blue line. Um, taking us, we went all the way to mile two, where we saw that all the loops around mile two have been completely cleared, you know, especially on the ones on the right hand side, right? And, and information reaching me where that, you know, heater to containers and trailers usually just, you know, stay there permanently. But we'll be giving them instructions that we're going to wall off the place and keep the entire environment there, you know, um, um, clean and tidy um, for uh, for beautification. On the other side, right, um, there has not been enough extensive clearance, you know, meaning on the journey from, from mile two all the way back to Orile, the tax force have given them notices, right, and from next week, they will do the similar thing that they've done on the right hand side, they will do it on the left hand side. And whilst I was coming back, I also did indicate to them that it's a total zero tolerance. And gentlemen of the press, you remember that at our um, um, at our swearing in ceremony, all of the new commissioners that have you know um, responsibility for the environment, we've all been instructed. Here we have special advisor transportation, commissioner transportation, commissioner environment, and commissioner for information and strategy. And this exercise will continue. This is really just for us to re-emphasize what we have said. It's a total zero tolerance on bad behaviors, on recklessness, on all of our right of way, and ensuring that we can bring back the sanity, environmental sanity, on all of our corridors. Here, going back, we've also done a stopover um, at um, Akpongbo. And you've all seen that we've walked around. We need to do a bit of road cleanup. You know, we need to do a bit of, but we've expressed our displeasure with the level of environmental sanitation in front of all the shops. And they've given me their commitment that henceforth, they will make sure that all of the environments are kept clean. We went under the bridge as well to see what is happening under the bridge, given the very unfortunate incident that happened all throughout last year and better part of this year. And we've expressed again that it is zero tolerance under the bridges. The only things that are meant to be there are parking. We can allow for parking and little, 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 little trading. People that are selling granola, they can stay there. They are, but anybody that is doing anything that has to do with electricity, that has to do with welding, that has to do with any mechanical form, will not be tolerated under any of our bridges. So that's all we've done. And we've also seen also around here that um, um, our various yellow bus drivers, they need to also comport themselves. They need to be able to organize themselves and stay within the parking garages that have been allocated you know, for them. Here we are the ones um, at Akongbo and they are well, be well behaved. They, be, they are here under their parking lot and I'm hoping that they will keep this sanity all throughout the day. They are here now and we're hoping that we've instructed them that later part of the day they are not meant to leave you know, their garages to uh, places where they are not you know, um, supposed to do. This exercise, gentlemen of the press, will continue. Next week, we have other places that we'll be going to. In that inside Lagos Island, you know, um, Ikeja, you know, um, 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 we've been to Orile now, 
you know, Agege, everywhere of the city, we will be going around to, to express to the citizens why we need to, you know, clean up, you know, and ensure that we'll have a massive, 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 you know, re um, regeneration of a various neighborhood. I'll be consulting with the Ministry of Environment to see, you know, this is the policy, to see if it's possible for us to reintroduce the weekly, you know, um, or the monthly environmental service so that we can bring back the sanity, you know, of a livable city, you know, that, um, that, that we have seen that there has been a lot of um, lopsidedness, there has been a lot of, I mean, um, 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 recklessness, and we need to bring that back. And so we're going to work out a model where we would have, and like I said, zero tolerance, you know, on, on environmental, you know, issues, on all transportation issues, people not comporting themselves. We went on the way to Cop State, we're giving notices to them. We will clear and we'll remove everybody that does not have any business, you know, on our road. That's going to give us the opportunity to go back and also do a lot of road cleanup and road, road, lot of road improvements on all of these corridors. So Moving on from the governor's office segment on the city of Lagos TV show. And finally, from the governor's office, it was indeed another sweet victory for Governor Babajide Songulu with his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Amzat, when the state tribunal verdict threw out the petitions of the opposition parties, authenticating and affirming their victory from the last held gubernatorial elections. Mr. Governor, who saw the verdict as victory to all Lagosians, enjoined candidates from the opposition parties to collaborate and cooperate with his administration to move the state forward. I just got news that um, the, the tribunal, the electoral tribunal that was, um, that was considered to sit at our governorship election, um, just completed the second reading, the second judgment. Um, I'm sure you know too well that there were two different suits. The first one, which was um, against um, Mr. Deputy and myself and our party, um, I'm told was for over five hours, which was PDP, and which I'm told was all thrown out. Um, there's a journalist that said that uh, PDP were busybody. I don't know what that means. Um, but the second um, reading was um, between ourselves again and the candidate of uh, the Labour Party. Um, I'm glad to announce from the information I've gotten that both um, judgments were given in our favour. And I want to first commend uh, the judiciary, the, um, the judges that um, um, had and led and gave this judgment for, I imagine, in, my, in, my, in our view, um, a well thought out, a well detailed um, judgment. Um, they took their time, and I think they explained to everyone the reasons that led them to, um, to the views and to the conclusions that they've, they've, they've had to give today. And so I want to thank them for doing a good job for the state and for the nation. Um, but as, as it is right now, um, um, Mr. Deputy and I feel too very privileged and want to um, thank all Lagosians, you know, for staying with us for um, even the very first set of congratulatory messages that were gotten. But for us, it's, it's a victory for all, right? We do not want to come out here and say that somebody had lost or somebody had, um, had um, won. Um, all of us, you know, in the journey of, of a political trajectory like this, I imagine there are no winners, there are no losers. I still want to give an opportunity, like we did in the night in which we were declared winners, you know, to still give an opportunity to all of the candidates, you know, that contested with us, that if they feel, you know, um, the passion that we have, and if they feel truly, really committed um, to serve, we could still sit with them and see in what way they want to serve the state. The state is big, the challenges are real, and the opportunities are boundless, you know, and, and there is every room for everybody to contribute in one form or the other. So for us, it's really about service. For us, it's really about ensuring that all of the promises that were given to Lagosians were not distracted, we keep to it, and this has further given us, you know, 
um, an opportunity for to double up, you know, and to ensure that we can continue to give um, the real dividends of democracy. And that's a wrap from the Governor's Office segment on the City of Lagos TV show. Thanks for watching.